Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnus Nordahl, I'm a captain instructor of ATR aircraft. This is the third video about the primary flight display, PFD, in ATR aircraft with glass cockpit. The first video covers the procedure from power up until we are ready for takeoff. And the second video takes you from takeoff until reaching cruise speed. If you have not seen them before, I recommend you to watch them because they explain the basics of the PFD and associated control panels. You will find links below. This video is about the ILS approach. The aircraft is an ATS 72600 with standard 3.1 software. We are in Bon Male Airport in the Maldives, from the south. The ATS declares that runway 36 is in use, the transition level is 130, it always is, and the weather is good. Male Control has cleared the also on Alpha Arrival for ILS X-Ray 36. I have set up the nav aids and they will be checked during the approach briefing. The approach briefing starts with a review of any threats. Male Airport is the home base for more than 80 seaplanes, so we will look out for them. Dalso 1 Alpha takes us from Dalso to Mike Mike 501 and then to Benko, which must be crossed at 4000 feet or above. ILS X-ray 36, the frequency is 109.9, set active on both sides. To check the final approach course, I select heading mode, change the navigation source to VR ILS 1, and check the inbound course is 003. Then I set navigation source back to FMS1 and select now mode. El now green. At Mike Mike 601, we shall have 2000 feet on a glide slope. We will fly a continuous descent from top of descent until capturing the glide slope. The step down on the chart is useful if you fly a localizer approach and do not have FMS or GPS to control the descent profile. Minima is 220 feet. You may find it strange that MDA is used to define minima for an ILS approach, but on ATR aircraft the label MDA means barometric altimeter and DH means radio altimeter, which is only used for ILS CAT 2 approach. A better label would have been radio and baro. This video explains it in detail. You find the link below. Runway elevation is 8 feet, MSA is 1500 feet. Missed approach, climb straight ahead to 4000 feet, turn right and proceed direct to Benko and hold or as directed by ATC. Briefing completed. Any questions? When we are 5 minutes before top of descent, the vertical deviation indicator becomes active. The magenta color means the source is the FMS. Right now it commands you to maintain altitude. When reaching top of descent, it will come on a descent along a 3 degrees path, which is standard for descent. We like to start descent earlier, because this allows us to descend with a higher speed for a longer time, and therefore reducing the flight time. The fuel consumption is not affected by this. Therefore, when we see the vertical deviation indicator, we ask ATC for descent. And I clear us descent to 7000 feet, QNH 1011. There are several ways to initiate the descent. The easiest method is to press Vina push button. Vina path green. This means the FMS calculates a descent path from our position all the way down to final approach fix or final approach point, depending on type of approach. And it will respect all altitude constraints. For example, the minimum 4,000 feet when passing Benko. The magenta speed target shows 228 knots. This is the cruise speed at 7000 feet, which we have selected. Standard speed during descent is 240, so I select manual speed target, 240 knots. This is checklist. The magenta number on the VSI is the target vertical speed in hundreds of feet per minute. It is computed by the FMS. The green number is the actual vertical speed. 
The Eclair Direct Benko, the way point shown here is a beam dull saw, which is created by the FMS when you're selecting direct a waypoint further ahead. We set TCAS to below. The navigation display on the MFD will then show traffic from 2,700 feet above to 9,900 feet below. During the first part of the descent, the power levers have been in the notch. When we reach 240 knots, we adjust engine power to maintain the speed. And we hand it over to Mala Approach, 109er decimal 7. The flight conditions are very smooth, so I have decided to demonstrate a high speed protection. When the speed reaches 2.5 knots before VMO, or MMO at high altitudes, the aircraft will start to pitch the nose up. A reduced speed label and three clicks are triggered when the high speed protection is active for more than 6 seconds. Your action is to reduce power. When passing transition level, flight level 130, we set QNH 1011. Checking the altimeters, passing 1,500 feet now. When passing 10,000 feet, we will put on the landing lights and turn on the seatbelt light. Approach checklist. When we are 30 nautical miles from the airport, we see the terminal label. It means the full scale deflection on the HSI is reduced from 5 nautical miles to 1 nautical mile. We are approaching 7000 feet and while approach clears us to descend to 2000 feet. I will delay the insert node 2000 feet to demonstrate what happens when you change the altitude when the aircraft is leveling off. Alt star, I change the altitude and we get pitch hold, trick click and alt off is flashing. When the altitude is set, we get alt cell blue. The vertical deviation indicator is almost centered, so we can select Vina right away. Vina path green.
We have cleared ILS X-ray approach to runway 36. To activate the ILS, we must change the navigation source. If we change from FMS to ILS, the autopilot will revert to basic mode. Therefore, we must change to heading mode before we change the navigation source. And since VNAV can only be used when we have LNAV, we must select VS mode before selecting heading mode. VS green. When we change to VS mode, target vertical speed will change from magenta to blue. Heading select green. We change navigation source to ILS number 1. The HSI and the aviation bar change to blue with a black background. Localizer alive. Then we press the approach push button. Lock blue, GS blue. The ILS is armed. We are only one dot below the glide slope. I reduced the vertical speed so we can capture the glide slope without leveling off. Lock star, lock laser capture. The green frame is visible for 7 seconds and serves as an attention getter. Glide star, alt select is disabled and we can set the govern altitude 4000 feet. CAT2 means both ILS receivers are operative and category 2 is available. Lock green, lock laser hold. GS screen, glide slope hold. The heading bug is centered when we press the heading knob. Very useful feature. I select auto speed. When an ILS approach is armed or captured, the target speed is 170 knots. We are 11 miles from touchdown and I reduce power to idle. The two amber lines at 285 knots mark flap 15 speed. Radio altimeter alive. You can see that the radio altimeter shows a higher altitude than the barometric altimeter, even we are flying over the sea. The reason is that the atmospheric temperature is 17 degrees above standard. The temperature at the airport is 32 degrees Celsius. This means we are higher than indicated altitude. This is not a problem. Six miles. Flap 15. Speed checked. Flap 15. Target speed 140 magenta. Flap 30 speed is 150, but first we will lower the landing gear. Maximum speed for the landing gear is 170 knots. Autopilot off. Gear down. Speed checked. 3 green. With the autopilot off, we are degraded to ILS Cat 1. Flaps 3-0. Speed checked. The white F marks flap retraction speed in case of a govern. The green bug is the govern speed. Flaps 3-0. Target speed 103 magenta. At 1200 feet on the radio altimeter, we have dual coupling. 
This means the flight director will follow the average signal from both ILS receivers. Before landing checklist, when we are descending below 1000 feet on the radio altimeter, the flight director changes from 27 to 15 degrees bank in turns. This is called low bank. If we are in IMC, instrument meteorological conditions, we must be stabilized at 1000 feet. On this approach, however, we are in uh, VMC, visual meteorological conditions, and must be stabilized at 500 feet. That means we are fully configured on correct flight path with correct power, and the speed must not be more than target speed plus 10. And the before landing checklist must be completed. The two amber lines on the altimeter is the minima, 220 feet. And we are clear to land. 500, stabilized, continue. Your damper off, it must be off during landing, otherwise it will work against your rudder input. Continue. Mal Airport is made for a large aircraft, and if you follow the glide slope, you will cross the threshold at 80 feet instead of 50. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. We start to flare and reduce power to idle. Touchdown. Power lifts to ground idle, and use reverse as required. 70, my control. The first officer takes the yoke, I take the nose steering. And we exit the runway. When the autopilot is off and we press standby, all flight director modes are removed. And that is all for this time. In the next video, we will fly a greener Elnav approach. Until then, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy landing. 200.